Hey, Willie Mayette, welcome to another Willie Answers. Um, so this one is from Stephen here, and uh, he was basically asking, uh, he's struggling with choosing progressions that fit into a context of a tune. He's talking about Green Dolphin Street and how can he can extend Green Dolphin Street and extend the, the solo section. Uh, so I want to give you a, a couple of pointers on how to create a jazz arrangement and give you just some basic, like if you went out to a gig, um, you know, I play uh, several times throughout the, the, the month and, you know, I'm playing with musicians and typically what happens on a gig is this. You will play a real book tune, right? A lot of times we have these tunes memorized. We've played them for years and years. And usually what you do is you'll uh, usually start with some type of introduction and then you'll play the head, right? The melody of the song. And you go around and you will uh, improvise and solo and until finally you play the head again and then you usually... Uh, finish up with some type of ending. Now, uh, this tune is written in the key of C in, in the real book. All right, so a lot of times uh, uh, it will start in a Latin feel. Some players like to do the whole thing uh, Latin. Some players like to do the whole thing swung. A lot of times uh, the first part will be Latin. And this will be swung. All right, and that part will be swung, all right? Uh, like, kind of like that, that B part. Um, now, a lot of times, oh, so, oh, yeah, the introduction. So, a lot of times when you're going to start with the intro. So, this is a nice way of doing an introduction. Do like a C major and then you can go up to a D-flat major. Basically, the, the concept, don't worry about necessarily the voicings that I'm using. The concept is that whatever key you're in, start on that key and then go up a half step. So it start with the major chord of that key and then go up a half step. So like if you're gonna do C, so here's a nice open voice. You can do that as well if you can't stretch and hit the 10th. C major to D flat. When you're ready, then instead of going to D flat, just go to the G. You can go to a G uh, altered if you want, or or just hold that D flat out and then. And then this is also a nice change in here. So C to an F seven to an E flat uh, E minor seven. A7 and then your D minor. Now, a lot of times we don't change the, we don't add on chords in there. So, uh, one thing Stephen was asked is, you know, I, I can like take that D minor to G and add the F to the B flat and then can I just kind of keep extending that? A lot of times we will keep the form of the song as is. Why? Well, typically when you're playing with other players, if they're used to playing the form of the song a certain way, it's 24 bars, 32 bars, you know, whatever it is, you start changing the form around on them, if, especially on the fly. A lot of times this stuff isn't rehearsed. You just, you know, get together and play the gig. Um, when you're doing that on the fly like that, then you're going to mess everybody up. So a lot of times we don't change around the form. Now, if you're playing solo, well, sky's the limit. You could really do whatever it is that you want. Um, but let me tell you something that uh, is a nice arranging tip, especially on this song that we like to do, is you start out in C. There you go, into a whole song. And then you go through the entire song again, and then the next time you go through the song, then you go up to E flat. <laughs> so, so play it in C the first time around and then go up to E flat the next time around and you can keep going back and forth between the key of C and the key of E flat, the key of C, the key of E flat. Now, if you're playing solo, uh, again, I wouldn't suggest that you necessarily mess around with the form on the inside of the song. A lot of times what you could do is, um, let's say that you wanted to go from C uh, yeah, it's 
something like that, right? Okay, so so there you go. You're 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 in C. You just finished out the last uh, last part of the song, and you want to go to E flat. So now maybe what you might do is like. I'm going up to an F sus. D flat, E flat, F sus, D. And then I moved into E flat. Right, so what I did there is I was I was going from the C to the F sus4 chord. Why did I go to F sus4? Because I know going from a 1 to a 4 is going to sound good, and the sus4 is going to give it kind of a cool modern sound. And then the D flat, D flat, I'm thinking, remember in the beginning I said you can go to C up to D flat? Well, I'm just bringing that in again. So D flat, I'm going to go back to F, so go to E flat and then F sus. Then I did D flat again, E flat, F sus. And then I went to G sus, right? And then now I'm going to move into G, into E flat, so I could change that into G minor. That's the three chord in the key of E flat. Then C minor, F minor. Now that's not necessarily like the the best you know transition. I'm just coming up with this on the spot. If I really take some time with it, then I could say, all right. That's kind of nice. So uh, C to F sus, D flat to G flat major, and then B major to E major, and then and I can go up to my F minor if I want. See how I'm moving into the key of E flat now. F minor. There's my two chord going to the five chord. B flat. I can throw that sus four flat nine if I want. That's a nice sound. Now I'm in E flat. Right, so that, that's a cool sound, but I couldn't do that with a group live because unless the bass player has really great ears and kind of knows where I'm going to go, if I'm like, if, I, if I'm finishing out the song in the key of C. Like that's a transition that's like, whoa, wow, it's kind of a crazy transition. Sounds cool, but it's something that would have to be worked out if playing with a band. If I'm doing it solo piano, then hey, then I'm then I can do whatever I want pretty much. As long as I stay pretty much in time, or if I'm making a conscious effort to like uh I can make a conscious effort to, to really make this rubato. Back in time. All right, so I can, uh, you know, make that conscious effort to play rubato, but then come back in time. See how I like kind of brought it up. See that thumb. Do some really cool stuff here. Go to an E. Right, 
so you can really, you know, again, when you're playing solo piano, sky's the limit. It's really just limited to your own imagination. So hope that answers some questions for you on how you can, you know, some different arranging techniques. Um, and ask your questions on the forum, and I will see you in the next Willie Answers. Post in our student forum at forums.jazzedge.com and get your piano and music questions answered. Thanks for watching.